Well, thanks, Hero. Hi, everybody. My name is Jack Cox. Uh, I have been at FBN for about a year and a half now, a very busy year and a half, um, uh, building you know, what, what, what I'm about to show you. Um, my background prior to coming to FBN and uh, prior to, to really being in ag was uh, you know, 20 plus years in you know, what we now call supply chain, warehousing, trucking, et cetera, but really the last really 12 or so now really a focus on e-commerce. Um, I spent some time at Amazon, um, some time at Wayfair and some time at Target, building out their logistics networks. One of the interesting things about that time is I was at Amazon when people were saying, "Hey, guys, see, yeah, books and CDs uh, make sense, right, in an e-commerce model." But you guys are never going to sell TVs. Who's going to buy a TV online? Or you know, you're never going to you're never going to be able to build a business, you know, setting a toothbrush. Uh, and then I went to Wayfair, and it was a similar conversation. Uh, no one's ever going to buy a couch online, right? Uh, it just doesn't make sense. There's no way to do it. Um, and then, you know, even at Target, right? Target uh, had a great strategy of using their stores to ship e-commerce. And, you know, the retail sector was like, you can't use stores. Stores are kind of customer-facing. You can't turn them into mini fulfillment centers and ship products. We did all those things at all those places, and, and, and I had... Um, you know, uh, a part in building that. And so the opportunity to come here to FBN and do that in this sector, um, where I think uh, farmers are underserved and rural communities are underserved with this was uh, uh, was really exciting and a good challenge. So I'm gonna go a little bit, in that next uh, slide please, into, you know, foundationally, you know, this is, uh, you know, take notes, <laughs> this is the secret sauce of e-commerce. Um, and this is how we've built the team, uh, right? We use data. Um, to plan that data is integrated into our operations um, at every level. Um, we place inventory using that data. We create a forecast. We recognize what's going on. People work with process, right? We have we have a way of doing things. If you walk into one of our logistics buildings in uh, in uh, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, it's going to feel and look and operate much like the one in uh, Great Falls, Montana, or in Saskatoon, uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, the physical presence of those buildings gives us proximity to customers, our network style, right? This is a logistics network. It's not a warehouse network, it's a logistics network. It's about movement, it's about agility. Um, this is one of the core advantages that we have to move inventory into the right place at the right time. Uh, as an example, last year, speaking in Great Falls, Montana, we were able to recognize very early that, that there was a growing insect problem. We were able to respond, send uh, Python for up there um, very quickly in quantities much greater than we would have forecast or placed naturally and serve that need and, and that's 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 the difference in a logistics network and a warehouse network is that agility and then a differentiated delivery experience right the on-farm delivery experience uh, is difficult right there's a lot of a lot of folks in commercial transportation that don't want to service it or they don't service it well um and so you know building that piece that's reliable um, that's fast uh, from a transportation in that final mile of, of on the farm uh, is critically important to be successful as well. So, so that's those are the building blocks of, of what we've built. Next slide, please. So, uh, so a big piece of that is is that final mile. We've launched, you know, to to to, to kind of leapfrog where um, I would say the market. Um, the transportation market capacity is or willingness to serve rural uh, delivery, we've, we've gone out and we've launched our own fleet, right? So we can click, we can really control that delivery experience um, and we can manage um, uh, with our network as much as we can. And I'll talk a little bit about that, that, that delivery on farm with drivers who understand, right, the local community, understand the local roads, how to get to farms um, and how to, you know, more effectively interact with, um, you know, with the grower when they make that delivery um, so that we can have kind of value add from them in that interaction. So look for these, you'll see these driving around starting this year. Next slide, please. So here's where you're gonna see those trucks. Um, this is our network that we've built. Um, these are, these are uh, not just a majority, but an overwhelming majority of these are run, operated by FBM. Um, and, and so you can see the blue here is, is two, a 250 mile footprint for each of um, our buildings. 84% um, in the US of our member acreage is within 250 miles. Um, and in Canada, 97% uh, of member acres are within 250 miles. Why does 250 miles matter? Uh, because that's, that's our reach out and grab you. 
uh, distance uh, with those trucks or anybody else, right? Um, and this is where, you know, I think there's the people in, used to a, a, you know, traditional model, it's more than you would want to drive to go get your product. Um, but that's a distance I'm willing to drive to deliver it to you. Um, and that I can drive and that our drivers can do that. Can do and, and we can do that effectively um, and that can give us that speed you can see we still have some portions of the u.s and the east and the, and the, very, the southeast and into texas which are farther than 250 miles away we will grow into those areas but in the meantime our buildings in the indianapolis area in the memphis area um, in joplin uh, missouri those are all really strong transportation hubs right so we have good partners there we're able to get transportation capacity quickly and effectively and move it into those areas uh, when we need to uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to call back to what Hero went through a little bit in that checkout process. So, so when you're checking out, we can give you that um, that promise that says, you know, standard delivery by 318. That's the fastest we can move with uh, what we call surety that we can say, hey, we can do this and we can really reliably uh, get that to you. That's why we call it a promise, right? It's not just an estimate; it's a promise. Um, and 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 we want you to use that when you need that product quickly by that date. When that works for you and that's when you need it, we're going to do that. What I would ask of you and what's important is that you also have an option to say, hey, I'll give you seven days um, or a little bit longer, um, you know, because I don't need it in, I don't need it on the 18th, right? But if I get it by the 21st, that's great. That still meets my needs. And what that does for us is it lets us build, build more efficiently. I'll show that. Uh, our, actually, let's go ahead and jump to that next slide here. So this is just a little representation. So, so let's say in our building in Hayes, Kansas, um, we've got a customer in the upper right who orders on Monday and says, hey, I, I want to get it on Wednesday. They, they choose that super fast option. And then you've got a customer uh, down there in uh, uh, Cimarron who, who, who says, um, I also want it on Wednesday. But maybe one of those growers doesn't actually need it on Wednesday, right? But I can't, with my truck, I can't hit both those locations. Now, I'll still honor that promise. I'll just have to go to a third-party transportation uh, company um, and and deliver that. Now, that's that's going to be um, we're striving, working very hard. In my experience, at places like Amazon and Target and Wayfair, has taught me how to get the most out of my transportation partners. Right, so that will still be a good experience. But the truck, the best experience, the truck experience, the FBM. If you give us that flexibility, now let's say um, that that um, that that grower up near Selena there um, had said. You know, I'll give, I'll give me, give me the extra few days. I don't need it as fast as possible. And then somebody else orders, and they say, hey, a couple of days later, they say, hey, I need, I need it on Friday. I can deliver both of those together because I have the flexibility in the upper right to to match it with that need in the in the uh, the one near uh, the south of Lindsberg there, and deliver those both together. So, so I think what I, so really the takeaway is, put in when you need it by. I will get it to you by when you need it. If that's in two days, select two days if that's when you have to have it. If you have a little bit of latitude, give us the latitude. We'll get it to you by that date that we, we show, show on there. But it's going to allow us to really deliver that better experience, be more efficient, keep our costs down. Um, and, and the nature of this company and one of the great things about being a mission-based, customer-focused company is we will pass those savings on to you. We're not going to stick them in our pocket when that happens. So, so that's the that is the the um, the network. That's how we're delivering a a reliable and differentiated uh, delivery experience. Why you can you know that promise of getting it on farm when you need it. If you give it to us, we'll do it. We've had already in the preseason. We've delivered tens of millions of pounds here uh, of, of of product crop protection and seed over the last few weeks, right? Um, and and and. We have the supply, we've been able to get it there. Um, and I would also say what that means is we head into these next few weeks right before the season, we've got the capacity in this network, we have the supply. If you haven't ordered yet, order, we can still deliver um, uh, very, very easily uh, now because because of the, the footprint of this network, because of how it runs and, and that delivery experience. So.